owns it, but anybody can write whatever they want. Nobody's being paid to write for it. Uh, you've been laughed out of the room. Um, it also, I like this Rorschach text because it it's, uh, gives you all sorts of uh, uh, ways of, of what Wikipedia is to all sorts of people. But it's also the case that for a long time there were claims that, oh, if you publish this, it's going to make it much harder and more expensive to do uh, tests because people will be prepared. Um, in any event, it killed uh, the other one. Um, this is not a uh, unique story. Right. This is not a unique story. If we go uh, uh, back uh, um, 20 years, I love the story Don was telling because uh, it actually now easily and happily tells me the story uh, 20 years before that as well. The thing is, who was yesterday's innovator is not the critical prediction of who will be tomorrow's innovator. When you buy 65 companies in 65 months, you have a theory of where innovation happens. And it's not not invented here. It's specifically not invented here. <laughs> right? It's the opposite of the not invented here uh, 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 syndrome. It's the embrace of that. And what I want to identify for you, and, and, and I've spent a lot of time in the last 15 years or so emphasizing very much the importance of non-market activity to innovation, to freedom, uh, 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 to a rich culture. But part of what's interesting about this cluster of, of, of facts of life uh, is that they come both from the non-market and from the market, but from the edge when they come from the market, from the small scale, from the new, from the innovative. And the critical thing, obviously, is um, um, uh, uh, how do we get there? How do we get that level of experimentation uh, uh, that runs forward? Essentially, if you look at what uh, uh, Peoria and Sable described as the second industrial divide, the rise of the large firm uh, integrated across uh, um, uh, multiple markets with wider scale, what we got was it was too expensive for decentralized innovation. Certainly when it was not market, I mean you continuously have fans and enthusiasts and you have the stories of, of, of the Cornish miners, but this is of course in the first industrial divide. Um, you have that, and you have Eric von Hippel's great work on, on bikes and windsurfers, but mostly what you have are firms and uh, governments, to some extent, uh, uh, very large nonprofits like universities, uh, but with government funding or with nonprofit funding. Um, what you see today, obviously, is a radical decentralization of the physical capital of information, knowledge, and cultural production. Uh, and for the first time since that industrial revolution, the most important inputs into the core economic activities of the most advanced economies are widely distributed 